Welcome back everybody to another episode of Mastering My Demon. Today we're going to be going into Art and Spells Meta Pipe 3. It's currently in beta development, but there are some really cool features that I'm excited to show you. This first episode is just going to be an introduction into the tools and kind of exploring if it's worth it compared to its other competitors. Without further ado, let's jump into it. All right, now, before we get started, there's a few prerequisites that we need to make sure we have in place before getting into the tool itself. So first and foremost, you're going to want to go to this GitHub Epic Games My Human DNA Calibration. I made a couple episodes going over it a little bit before, but what we're going to need for this tool is to go into Releases on the right side and go down to 1.3.0. I believe Metapipe 2 uses 1.1.0 and they've got documentation pointing to different places. So just make sure you go to 1.3.0 under assets and go to source code zip. Now, once you've downloaded that zip file and extracted it, what you're gonna need to do is copy the folder within it. it should be this parent folder that has the data, DNA viewer, DNA calib, all these within it. Copy that over to your C drive and then name it DNA underscore calibration. They've hard-coded the file paths here, so you could point to it directly later. I'll show you how to do that as well, but for the purposes of this tutorial, you could go ahead and place it on your C drive here. Next, it will help if you download Quixel Bridge. This is just gonna allow us to move MetaHuman assets, DNA files, and then, you know, download the actual textures and all the different things that we need uh, directly from your computer without having to go into Unreal Engine just a way to you know streamline the process a little bit so go ahead and download this now it will also help if you have a MetaHuman already um, this could be a base mesh that we we're going to use as a basis so we could take the rig from it and utilize you know its full functionality so if you don't have one yet you can go ahead and create one from the MetaHuman creator all the links will be in the description down below as well now the tool we will be reviewing and going through today is MetaPipe 3 uh, you can find it on the artsandspells.com website and if you go ahead and click the get it now, it'll bring you over to an art station page. On this page, you can go ahead and add it to your library, then go ahead and go to your library and download the file from there. Again, when you're downloading it, make sure you're downloading the correct file version that's compatible with your Maya version. So 2023 with 2023, 2024 with 2024. The Maya Human plugin itself that's developed by Epic Games is not yet compatible with Maya 2025. So that's why you're gonna see a lot of these tools not have that compatibility yet. It will download as a RAR file, so you're gonna to have to extract that compressed file type and you should get something like this. Inside you're gonna see the Maya version with an installation readme and exe. If you go into the installation readme, it's gonna say inside this folder's text field, type cmd and enter, run the following command inside the command panel to install both free and studio versions. You can do this or they also have the metapipe.exe. You go ahead and double click this. It's going to install the free version and then the paid version. Now, when I was doing this, I encountered an issue. It would say that my Maya shelves path is not found, and no matter what I did, it would never fix it. And so what I found as a solution was launching my script editor and then launching this code here. I'll put this in the description as well. Uh, this should be exactly what shows up in the Metapipe. If you go ahead and edit this inside the command, should be the same here. For whatever reason, it works through the script editor, executing it this way, but it doesn't work through the shelf for whatever reason. So if we go ahead and execute this, it should say trial begins and you can confirm. Now, before we go click in anything, we need to go and set our locations. So this should be pointing to the correct one and the DNA calibration path should be pointing to the correct area as well. Again, if you didn't want to rename it or put it on the C drive, this is where you could set that path that I talked about earlier. What we do need to change, however, is the DNA path. We're gonna to need to point this to our MetaHuman DNA asset that we're going to use as a base for our rig. For this, we're gonna open up Quixel Bridge. Now, if you sign into Quixel Bridge with your Epic Games login, you should see your MetaHumans show up on this MetaHumans area in MetaHumans UE5 or UE4 if you made it an older version. Once you have that, you can go ahead and select your MetaHuman, select what resolution you wanna be working with, then you can go here to your export settings or download settings. First, we're going to go to our download settings. And you want to make sure that your models are set to FBX and source asset. I'm having all LODs enabled here. And then if we go back here, export settings, I have export target set to Maya, textures, models, Maya, FBX, source asset, and then I should have it exporting every other LOD. 
From there, you go ahead and hit download. If you're doing it in 8K resolution, it's going to take a minute. Go ahead, walk around, grab a coffee, whatever you need. And once it's complete, there's two things that we need to make sure that we have in place. If you go to Windows, Settings, Plugin Manager, scroll all the way down. You could load the embed rl4.mll file here. This is going to load the MetaHuman plugin, allowing you to use the MetaHuman rig. In addition to that, we're going to need to go into Quixel Bridge, Manage Plugins, and we're going to want to make sure that we have the Maya plugin downloaded. Once you have that download, you should be able to close, reopen Maya, and see the MS plugin here. If you go ahead and click on that, apply material to selection. Now, you should be able to go into Quixel Bridge, exit out here, and export your live link test, or whatever the name of your MetaHuman is. And should say export to Maya, export successfully. You minimize this, minimize this, minimize this. We can see nothing's here. It's because I have multiple versions of Maya open. Give me a moment. Now you should see your character. This is the live link test that I did in a previous video. A uh, little old man character. But if you weren't able to export directly from Quixel Bridge, you have a Quixel location that you would define within Quixel Bridge, and if you download it, you should be able to go into downloaded, DHI, go into the asset, 8K, MetaHumans, live link test, source assets, and all the way down, you should have a name of your MetaHuman, underscore fullrig.mb. If you open it up, it's going to be essentially the exact same thing we have here. For this video, I'm focusing directly on the facial rig. I know you could customize the body and the eyes and whatever, but I'm opening up this file specifically so we could just copy out the body mesh and the eyes. So what we're gonna wanna do, just select body, file, export selection, export that to a location, and then go to the eyes, I'm gonna just locate them through here, I left, I right, and you can go to file, export selection here as well. Now, if you want to use your own custom topology, you're going to need a wrapper like Wrapper 4D, Z Wrap. Metapipe 3 does not have a built in wrapper. I know Mesh Morpher is working on their own wrapper, which would be huge if they're able to get that within their own tools so you don't have to buy all these different licenses. Now, since I'm going to be avoiding using Wrap 4D or Z Wrap for this tutorial, I'm just going to be sculpting something using the base LOD mesh from here. So if you want to do the same, go ahead and click on the head, LOD zero mesh, file, export selection, bring it into Blender, do it in Maya with the sculpting software or ZBrush. I'm going to do mine in ZBrush and then we will pull back here in a second. Alright, so once you got your sculpt set up, what you're going to want to do is go into the home page here. We can just go to new scene, don't save. Now if we click on the origins button here, it should pull in the DNA file that's associated with this path here in the Metapipe DNA path. Now you can see this is the old guy character that we were sculpting from before. And what we could do is just follow these steps here. Now we're gonna do a batch import. You can grab the body and face meshes. Once the joint transform section completes, you should have your MetaHuman rig right here. Go ahead and play around with the deformations. Again, if you see it breaking and flying out everywhere here, make sure you freeze transformations and delete history on your custom meshes beforehand. But you should see everything working as intended here. Go ahead and undo all of that. And now we can go to build body. If you still want to, you know, tweak things out or fix something, maybe the eye mesh is broken or the head mesh, you go ahead and click on whatever mesh it is and click mesh fix. Now, since we had the body selected earlier in one of our meshes, we can go ahead and click build body. And now you should see the body mesh in your scene. You should also see the bones. If we go ahead and turn on bone visibility, you should see a skinned asset working as intended along with the working face mesh as well. Cool. Now what we could also do is click on control rig. What this does is generates the actual control rig skeleton, allowing you to you know, animate your character using the animation rig with IK setup and everything that you need to animate properly. 
Now you can go ahead and assign materials, change out different blend shapes, export them, edit them, import whatever you need to do to change any of the functionality that you want to here with your specific MetaHuman. One last thing before we export, we actually have to go to Mesh Display and to Paint Vertex Color Tool. Go ahead and double click that to open up Tool Settings, go into Attribute Maps, Import, Import Map Name. And here we need to import from the DNA calibration into data into vertex color PNG. And when you do so, make sure that you have the head selected first and do that again. And you should see those vertex colors show up on the mesh. And lastly, before hitting export, go ahead and hit export selection just to pull up the menu options here, because this is what the tool is going to be referencing these different settings in here. So we're going to want to make sure that Tangent and Binormals is on, Smooth Mesh, and then lastly, Reference Asset Content. Other than that, animation should be turned off and everything should be pretty similar to the default settings here. Go ahead and click Cancel, and then Export. Then what you're going to have is a body, head, and DNA file in this output folder after you hit the Export. And what you could do is import the head, import the body, import the DNA onto the head skeletal mesh and set up your metahuman from there within Unreal Engine and the blueprint from the existing character you had before. That's how you get the custom functionality on the new asset. In doing so, following the tutorials from Art and Spells on Metapipe 3, I ran into crash after crash and bug after bug when trying to go through the whole process. Whether it's in Maya, Unreal Engine, or just trying to work through their documentation, I understand they're in beta, right? That's a very fair disclaimer to be made, but they also have fully fledged perpetual $300 licenses that aren't nearly ready, I think, personally, for production use, right? There are so many issues that this tool, everything that you could do with this tool within, right? the Origins toolset is something that you could do manually with very minimal use within DNA calibration, right? You could only use two commands and replicate everything within Origins while using the default Epic Games mesh to metahuman pipeline. If you want to do something cool, you still are dependent on the wrappers, um, whether it's wrap 4D or Z wrap, anything like that. So I just don't think it's worth it at the moment. They are incredibly responsive on their Discord server if you're running into technical issues, but you shouldn't have to rely on someone at all times for fielding these questions. There are just too many issues. The documentation isn't where it needs to be. They need to have you know better debug and error messages, and they need to update everything from Metapipe 2 to Metapipe 3 before I would consider using this any further. Don't get me wrong. There are features within Nitrous, within Genetics, and within Synapses that are really promising. This isn't a tool that I'm saying you should brush off and never look at again, but I think that before I would, you know, continue using it or even consider buying a license, I would make sure that there is proper documentation and a lot less errors along the way. This tool is designed to save you time in your custom MetaHuman pipeline, but the time that I spent debugging and trying to work around these different issues was more costly than the time I have saved by using the tool set to begin with. That being said, I implore you to download it yourself and give it a try, but I would not recommend starting off with a license, right? They are giving you that free trial to begin with for a reason. They want to get feedback from users so they can work to improve the tool for, you know, a larger user base layer down the line. I'm going to continue to review other tools from other developers working to make MetaHumans as seamless and as effective as possible. So stay tuned, keep learning, and I'll see you next time.